The True Story of Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon, The Queen's Hidden Cousins. Mystery surrounds the lives of the Queen's cousins, who were hidden away in a mental hospital with severe learning disabilities. The Crown is famed for leaving a few stones unturned in its portrayal of the royal family at its best and worst. Season 4 promises to be no different, as it charts the period from 1979 to 1990, focusing especially on the so-called People's Princess, Diana. But away from the whirlwind of glamour, fury, and scandal that rocked the firm in the Thatcher years, the new Netflix season premiering worldwide on Sunday also touches on a story of heartbreak away from the paparazzi's glare. Little is known about the Queen's cousins, hidden and allegedly abandoned. The Crown writer Peter Morgan may help us shed some light on their lives in an upcoming episode, and likely make uncomfortable viewing for the royals and royal fans. Who were the Queen's cousins? Nerissa and Catherine Bowes Lyon were the respective third and fifth daughters of John and Fenella Bowes Lyon. John was the elder brother of Queen Elizabeth, who became known as the Queen Mother. They were born with severe learning difficulties at a time when societal attitudes towards the disabled were less progressive than now. The pair did not learn to talk and were officially classed as imbeciles. What happened to the Queen's cousins? In 1941, when Nerissa was 22 years old and Catherine was 15, their family had them admitted to an institution, the Royal Earlswood Hospital in Red Hill, Surrey. They had, to all intents and purposes, been abandoned. There is no record of either woman ever receiving a family visit, according to a Channel 4 documentary Into the Sisters in 2011. Earlswood was not a happy place. Nurses and relatives of former inmates interviewed as part of the program recalled an institution that was regimented and had wards of 40 patients, cared for by two nurses. You gave them a bath, cut their nails, fed them if they needed help, one said. Nobody visited them, remembered their birthdays, or sent them Christmas cards, according to the program. In 1963, the family's entry in Burke's Parage registered that both daughters were dead, when in fact, they were still alive. It is unclear how much knowledge senior members of the royal family had of this fact, or how involved they were. Nerissa passed away aged 66 in 1986 and was buried in Red Hill Cemetery. According to the Telegraph, only hospital staff attended her funeral and her grave was marked with plastic tags and a serial number. A year later, the tabloids heard of the story and published a series of headlines, prompting Catherine to receive flowers from all over the country. She died six years ago, aged 87, having spent 55 years of her life Royal Earlswood Hospital, and since the facility closed in 1997, her final years in a care home. How does the Crown portray the Queen's cousins? Walker's episode on the sisters is unusually damning of the royal family, though it is unclear how much of it is fiction. The Crown suggests that by the 1980s, Nerissa and Catherine had been all but forgotten. Princess Margaret stumbles across the fact of their existence entirely accidentally, via her own therapist, and confronts the Queen Mother. According to the Daily Mail, Margaret, played by Helena Bohem Carter, rages in the episode. Locked up and neglected, they're your nieces, daughters of your favorite brother. It's wicked and cold-hearted, and it's cruel, and it's entirely in keeping with the ruthlessness which I myself have experienced in this family. If you're not first in line, if you're an individual character with individual needs, or God forbid, an irregular temperament, then you'll be spat out, or you'll be hidden away, or worse, declared dead. 
Darwin had nothing on you lot. Shame on all of you. The Queen Mother does not attempt to deny that she was complicit in the hiding away of her brother's children. Don't be so naive, she tells Margaret. We had no choice. The Queen Mother was a patron of the Royal Min Camp Society, a charity working for people with disabilities. Thank you for watching.